Welcome everyone. Hope you're all having a good day so far. Thank you for joining me and thank you to EJ Prescott for setting up this webinar so that we're able to get together today. My name is Sam Justice and I'm one of the engineers here at Presto Geosystems. We manufacture erosion control, stormwater management, and porous pavement products. We're located in northern Wisconsin and work closely with EJ Prescott and their territory in Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont on a wide variety of projects. Most of you know the great team at EJ Prescott through one of their local offices, so we're going to dive right into the presentation so that there are enough time for questions at the end. So the focus of today's presentation is going to be on rigid porous pavements with both gravel and topsoil surfaces for effective stormwater control. Here's some of the things that I hope you can get out of today's webinar. We're going to start with an understanding of the benefits of using a porous pavement system and how rigid systems can perform under varying traffic loading conditions. And then we're going to talk about how both aggregate surface and vegetated or grass surfaces can work for porous pavements and why you may choose one over the other. And finally, we're going to talk get into how porous pavements are capable of detaining stormwater runoff and helping achieve your green building goals on site. So the natural first question is, why are porous pavements needed and how are they different than the standard pavement surfaces we usually see? Porous pavements are a class of solutions that address, in a cost-effective way, regulations that need to be met. After 40 plus years, the Clean Water Act continues to create a need for stormwater management for both quantity and quality, and most states have developed non-point pollution regulations with specific targets. Local regulations may even require more stringent standards if a project is located near protected wetland or water source. Porous pavements are one way to meet these criteria while still performing in a structurally meaningful and long-lasting way. Another reason to choose porous pavement system is because you want to. Poor soil conditions are becoming more common as better suited sites are scarce and land is at a premium. High stormwater management value is the desire to make the best use of valuable high-cost land and reduce the need for stormwater ponds by increasing the porosity of your pavement. Porous pavement systems handle water at the point of impact, percolating water where it falls, and then avoiding conveyance pipes or other structures that may be necessary. And sustainable solutions are becoming a lot more common and popular with the public because of the high percentage of recycled materials, which means your land you're going to have less landfilling of those recycled materials. Plus, you can get green building credits for your projects. So there are a couple different porous pavement options available on the market today. The more traditional and probably the more well-known option for porous pavements is to use the pervious version of traditional pavements. So that's going to be porous concrete, porous asphalt, and paver blocks. These applications allow for normal traffic frequency use, and they do have increased infiltration over their non-porous versions, which can help with your stormwater requirements. They do act very similarly to their regular non-porous versions, but they have some durability challenges. One of the biggest differences is going to be in the overall cross-section. All three of these methods have deeper cross sections and require a choker or a bedding course between the pavement and your open graded base layer. This is an extra installation step that requires more time and adds costs. Plus, it's something that impedes the infiltration of water, which is the opposite of what we're hoping to do. And there are some other drawbacks to these methods as well. Cost is going to be one of the biggest factors both during installation and over the lifetime of the project. Installation requires specialized materials to create the pavement and specially trained contractors that know how to properly install this type of system. And you're going to have higher maintenance expenses over the lifetime of the project. Regular deep cleaning is going to be required to reduce clogged areas, as is resurfacing or replacement of lost material due to raveling, which can occur because of weak bonds between the material. In general, pervious concrete and asphalt surfaces tend to look unfinished, leading to some questionable aesthetics. Here at Presto Geosystems, we offer two different types of porous pavement systems. Instead of adaptations of existing pavements, our solutions are designed from the ground up to function as porous pavement. 
The first option is going to be a vegetated system. It's used for occasional or infrequent traffic and delivers the aesthetics of a green space. Local vegetation can be used to create a seamless look with existing plants, and a unique blend of topsoil and clean aggregate is used as the base layer, allowing for root growth while still providing the necessary stabilizing strength. Our other option is going to be an aggregate porous pavement. This system can handle higher frequency traffic, including daily use. The low cost combined aggregate can perform as an on-site stormwater detention basin, reducing or eliminating the need for conveyance pipes or other stormwater infrastructure. The structural strength and loading capabilities depend on your subgrade and your infill material. So these are some of the important characteristics that are inherent in the GeoBlock vegetated system. The GeoBlock system is a rigid porous paver unit, meaning that the panels are not meant to bend or twist. And this is quite different than other porous pavement units that are available today, which are considered flexible systems, and they have significantly reduced loading capabilities compared to the GeoBlock system. The attributes that have the biggest impact on load distribution are going to be the paver's wall strength and stiffness, plus the strong tabular connection between panels. And an important aspect of the GeoBlock units is going to be the large amount of open space in the bottom of each cell which allows for full root penetration so that the grass surface is thick and uniform. An engineered base of topsoil and aggregate provides an optimal growing medium while supporting your vehicle loads. The GeoPave aggregate units are going to be very similar to the GeoBlock vegetated units with those same rigid paver characteristics, but with specific features needed for the performance with an aggregate infill. The main difference I want to highlight is going to be the monolithic mesh bottom. This is a molded in-place mesh on the underside of the paver unit, and it's meant to keep the stone infill from migrating underneath the system, and the integrated nature of the mesh assists in the overall rigidity of the paver unit. The lattice bottom spreads the load similar to a snowshoe effect, so that the wheel loads aren't going to create ruts. And the GeoPave units are locked together with a connection device to create a fully integrated, contiguous pavement that's highly resistant to traffic stresses, and it's not going to lift up over time, as seen with some of the more flexible systems. So we've talked about the characteristics that make rigid porous pavement units special, and with these in mind, we can now talk about the benefits of choosing a porous pavement over a traditional hard surface pavement. Because the GeoPave aggregate units have a high percentage of open area and utilize a highly permeable open graded aggregate, the, stone, the storm water infiltrates exceptionally fast. And the loose and protected topsoil infill in the GeoBlock vegetated units allow water to infiltrate much faster than a typical vegetated area on your site. Both the GeoBlock and GeoPave systems offer significant storage of stormwater in the cross section as it moves into the groundwater system. Because the water infiltrates through the system, there's minimal sheet runoff at the surface, reducing flooding potential on and around your pavement. Other flexible paver systems have a glued on geotextile fabric underneath the paver unit, which causes the water to percolate much more slowly. Pavements that allow water to flow through the surface into an open graded base course can reduce your requirements for stormwater storage at the surface. And the rate of infiltration of both your porous pavement material and your subgrade soils is going to determine how much surface storage may be required. With a porous pavement system, you have the potential to eliminate a surface storage pond entirely. If your native subgrade has really poor infiltration, think a really heavy clay, or if you are required to direct water to a central location, you can include collection pipes in your open graded base course. In this way, you can have water flow through without affecting the grade of your surface or the overall strength or stability of the system. So you can have a nice flat parking lot and still collect your, your storm water with ease. The idea of paver strength gets back to the differences between rigid systems like GeoPave and GeoBlock and more flexible systems that are available. Our paver units have a high crust strength and a high flexural strength because of their rigid and shared wall connections. 
Pavers with enough strength allow for less base requirements to support your loads, reducing the potential cross sections by as much as 67%. And the surface of a porous pavement resists concentrated rutting as the load is dispersed across the rigid pavement, so no wheel ruts or sunken drive lanes are going to form and cause failure points. And our units are strong enough to drive on when they're unfilled, which makes installation both faster and easier. The units offer a large paver size, 20 inches by 40 inches, about five and a half square feet. The interconnected system joins each unit with strong connectors, common cell walls, and on the geopave system, that aggregate, that mesh bottom that we've talked about, that forms a contiguous pavement with a high distribution of vehicle loads. This allows for higher vehicle weights to drive on the system with a thinner cross section and allows for the system to be installed over poor or weak subgrades. Systems with disjointed cell walls will flex, and they just don't have that same load spreading capability. Speaking of load spreading, one of the functions of the GeoPave and GeoBlock systems is going to be to reduce the stress that's transferred to the soil by your vehicle traffic. So a great application of these products is to use them as tree root protection. By laying these systems over buried tree roots, as close to tree, tree trunks as possible, you can reduce the stress that puts pressure on these roots, potentially damaging or even killing the tree. So if you have trees that need to stay in place, these systems are a great way to still get your vehicle access roads. Like this driveway, which used the GeoPave system to create a stone drive around existing vegetation that the owners had wanted to keep in place. The shared wall and strong connections of these systems create a framework that's highly resistant to movement or breakage from vehicle turning stresses and torsional loads. So the GeoPave and GeoBlock systems are not just straight drive lanes, they're full service vehicle areas, allowing for starting, stopping, turning, and everything in between. The panels are not going to be damaged from any normal vehicle activities, even from the highest trucks or semis. Paver units align well with existing asphalt or other traditional pavements. Here you can see a parking lot extension. The paver units do come in those rectangles, but they can be field cut to handle curves, go around existing structures such as manholes, and accommodate other obstacles that are common on site. Geopave and geoblock units working in concert with a hard surface pavement are so porous that they can handle the sheet runoff from your adjacent impervious parking areas. So this is a great way to add additional parking spaces while still meeting stormwater requirements at the site, with no need to create additional stormwater infrastructure such as drainage swales or a pond. The cell walls of the GeoPave unit are meant to be visible, and so they are designed with a herringbone pattern, similar to a paver stone aesthetic. Additionally, the infill stone color can be varied to create a sense of separation, useful for walkways, parking lots, or road shoulders. The geo-block vegetated units allow for full grass growth with a natural look, so the cell walls are not visible through the grass. And so whatever look you're going for on your site, you can achieve with one of these products without that unfinished look that's so common with porous concrete or asphalt. Reducing a site's overall environmental impact can help meet green infrastructure, low impact development, or green building goals for building in protected or densely populated areas. It can also help you meet stormwater requirements that limit the amount of hard surface in your landscaping plans, which is becoming an increasingly common requirement in cities and townships. So this is something we experience all over the US, and we're absolutely willing to help you achieve these for your specific projects, so if you do have questions, please reach out. So there are a number of constructability benefits to these systems as well. The units are lightweight enough for a single person to carry two at a time, and the connectors are fast to install. Infill placement can be fast as tracked or rubber tired construction vehicles can drive on both the GeoPave or GeoBlock units when they're unfilled, as you can see here. Paving units, or excuse me, paving crews and specialized paving equipment are not necessary, and oftentimes landscaping crews or even volunteers are going to be all that's required. So you can save on equipment and labor costs, and these systems can go in the ground quickly without waiting for cure times or sequenced construction limits. The GeoPave and GeoBlock units do work on a mild grade. 
Because they're flat paver units, that slope does need to be quite gradual, without any sharp breaks between grade changes. A general rule of thumb is that if the slope is flat, the panels don't need to be anchored in place. If the grade of the slope is more than 8%, or about 5 degrees, anchorage may be required to help hold those panels in place so they don't slide to the bottom of the slope. Or if you aren't interested in having a sloped area, you can create grass steps like this bed and breakfast did for an attractive visual appeal. The locked in place system requires virtually no maintenance. Place it and forget it. Owners and maintenance crews are going to definitely appreciate this. We have bright yellow delineators available for parking lines or other markings, so you can make the space work for your needs. Other common extras, such as concrete parking stops, are also easy to install in the GeoPave or GeoBlock systems. Presto Geosystems has created a free, easy-use tool to determine the right porous pavement for your specific project and site conditions. A cross-section of the system is created based on your inputs and requirements. And there's a way to determine exactly how deep your base course needs to be for a certain amount of stormwater storage. The tool is available on our website, prestogeo.com, and our engineering team is always happy to give advice or expertise on designing a porous pavement system. So here's a quick look at what the design assistant tool can provide you. It's a very basic cross section, but it can be helpful during the beginning of the design process. If needed, there are some additional calculations and CAD details that the engineering team here at Presto can provide. But this is a good first step when talking to regulators to show that there is stormwater storage available with this type of system. So now let's take a closer look into the GeoPave aggregate porous pavement system. Here we can see a typical cross section of the GeoPave system. The units are two inches deep, so the depth of your overall cross section is going to depend on the amount of open beta graded base course that's required. There are a variety of factors that can decide the depth of that base course, but we usually recommend something under there just to help as a leveling course. Additionally, depending on your native subgrade, a geotextile separation layer may be required. But it is important to note that there is no choker or bedding course underneath the geopave units, so there's no layer that's going to limit the stormwater infiltration of the system. The biggest factor in determining your base depth is going to be the strength of your soil, expressed as the California bearing ratio. The higher the ratio, the stronger the soil. The strength of the geopave system is enough that even for the highest load rating from Ashto, H20, even H25, so your fully loaded heavy fire trucks, there's going to be a low base depth requirement, only 6 inches max compared to up to 14 inches for lighter weight flexible systems. And it's important to note that this table shows your minimum depth requirements. The depth of base can be increased when additional stormwater storage is required. So there are a wide variety of uses for the GeoPave system, including fire and utility lanes, site access roads, road shoulders for runoff reduction, and trails or walkways that allow for ADA compliant design. Unlike the GeoPave aggregate units, which are that rigid paver structure, flexible paver systems can have some problems due to not having those common cell walls or by allowing the stone infill to get underneath the system, causing uplift. Both of these issues are addressed in the design of the GeoPave system, with its rigid cell walls and that integrated mesh bottom that we've discussed. So just be aware that because the system says it allows stormwater infiltration, doesn't mean it's going to be appropriate for your project. So now I want to share a couple case studies to show how the geosystem works from start to finish. This project is an access road for going down to a swimming area for this lake. The walkway had to be ADA compliant so that everybody could use it. And it was also critical that the trail help reduce runoff into the lake. So the permeable nature of the geopave system was important. Because the system was over a highly permeable and stable sand surface, no stone base layer was required underneath the geopave panels. The system can fit right up against existing pathways, both concrete and the grassed area with a wooden path. So there's a plenty of flexibility on how to integrate the geopave system into your project area. 
The maintenance crew for this park was able to complete all of the installation for this job, which just goes to show how easy it is to lay down. The GeoPave connection devices are called U-Clips, and they're easy to install, and it's apparent where they need to be placed. Some of the cell walls are half height, and those half height walls line up between paver units, so the installers know exactly where the clips need to be placed. The clips can be installed with a single worker without needing any electrical equipment. A good hammer blow will do. A small excavator or front end loader is a great option for placing your stone infill. And here's a great way to show how the rigid geopave panels can create a curved path by staggering the panels through the curve area. The stone infill can then be placed both in and around the geopave units to create that final look while providing a stable surface. It's also a great way to maneuver around other obstacles in your area, such as boulders or manhole covers. So you can see the eroded trail before stabilization on the left. Both the trail surface and the surrounding area suffer from erosion. And then on the right is the new trail area, stabilized with the geopave pavers. The protected system is going to help prevent erosion from stormwater runoff and be a smoother walking surface for visitors. Some recommended tips for keeping the geopave pavement in good shape include keeping the lot clear of organics, such as fallen leaves, by raking or leaf blowing. This makes sure that those organics don't start decomposing over your porous surface, which would prevent water infiltration. Integration of the geopave system with an existing asphalt road was critical for this rural shoulder project in Maine. The local water district needed something that would drain and capture sheet runoff from the impervious asphalt surface. Loose gravel would just get washed into the surrounding lake, so the geopave system was, help cho was chosen to help with both of these issues. The road shoulder was stripped clear of vegetation and gravel, and compacted with a walk-behind tamper. The geopave units were placed right up against the asphalt road, which provides the edge constraints to help hold the system in place. And the units are able to be connected together to cover the area that's needed, in this case, at least wide enough for a car to pull over safely. The area is filled in with an open graded stone. This allows the water to infiltrate through into the subgrade, reducing runoff into the adjacent drinking water reservoir. And then the panels hold that stone in place so they don't get washed away, greatly reducing your maintenance requirements. And the geopave panels can support all highway traffic loading, making it a great option for all different types of roadways. And I know placing porous pavements in cold weather or snowy conditions is a concern for many regulators. So we have quite a bit of information available on our website, answering a lot of the common questions we see. Or you can feel free to contact us directly and we'd be more than happy to help alleviate concerns. Typically, we recommend either using a rubber plow boot to prevent contact damage between the plow and the paver units, or making sure that snow plow blades are kept about an inch above the geopave units. So yes, the geopave system can handle snowy environments. It's not a problem. So now we're going to shift and talk about the geoblock vegetated porous pavement system. Here we can see a typical cross section of the geoblock system. The geoblock unit comes in two different depths, and the overall depth of the system is also going to depend on your base course. Topsoil or sod is placed within the cells, and then the roots reach down into the base. And this base course is a unique mix of topsoil and open graded aggregate, which allows enough topsoil to promote root growth with the aggregate supporting your vehicle loads. We call it engineered base. The uses for the geoblock grass pavers are going to be similar to the geopave system, but the grass pavements are meant to be occasional use only. You can't drive on them every single day. So think special or ev event or overflow parking for churches, parks, stadiums, etc. Basically, anywhere that you don't anticipate vehicle traffic every single day. So as I said, there are two depths to the geoblock system, and they allow for some flexibility of choice. If the expected loads are quite light, think cars or pickup trucks, you don't need to support as much as roads that are going to be carrying fire trucks. The two products are similar except for the depth, and they perform in identical ways. And we can help you decide which is going to be the appropriate project for your 
product for your project. Again, the engineered base course acts as it does with the GeoPave system, with higher loads requiring more base. The deeper 2-inch GeoBlock 5150 unit can have shallower base depths with heavier loads, so if having a thin cross-section is important, that may be the way to go. Thin cross-sections may be required if there are shallow utilities that need to be avoided or if excavating costs are too great. And again, the table shows minimum depth requirements. You can increase the base depth if you want additional stormwater storage. So there are some flexible systems as well for the vegetated uh, surface, and they can suffer from some, some problems. The flexible systems tend to rut in areas of soft soil. And because they warp due to vehicle loads, those ruts are just going to keep getting deeper over time. And these systems require the infill to be sand, not topsoil. It's not hard to imagine the difference in, in grass growing in sand versus a nice nutrient-rich topsoil. Dead, straw, yellow-like grass versus green, healthy, soft grass. So we do have some case studies for the GeoBlock system as well. So this house was experiencing some septic issues, and the yard needed to be replaced to fix it. The owner also wanted to create additional parking spaces for guests, but he'd run out of room for a traditional driveway. So they decided to use the GeoBlock system to kill two birds with one stone. The homeowner decided to do all of the installation work themselves, which is absolutely possible with our rigid systems. Installation is simple and straightforward. The geoblock panels were laid directly on this cleared subgrade. No base layer was required due to the expected vehicle loads, which were quite low. Again, just passenger cars or pickup trucks. And the geoblock panels were then filled in with the excavated soil, saving on material costs and ensuring that grass is going to be able to grow in this area. The panels were laid in a herringbone pattern, which is recommended when there's going to be bi-directional traffic or lots of turning and movement, which is common in parking areas. Then the whole area was hydro seeded, which provides a complete coverage of the area with seeds and nutrient rich food to help healthy grass grow. Alternatively, you can also pre-mix seeds into the topsoil before placing them in the panels for a simpler installation if you don't have access to hydro seeding. The type of grass that's chosen isn't really important to the function of the geoblock system, so feel free to choose what works best in your local climate and will give you the look that you're going for. A few weeks after completion, the grass is fully grown in and completely camouflages the geoblock panels. The area still functions as a septic field because the geoblock panels help minimize the vehicle loads on this area, so the tires aren't tearing up a potentially saturated surface. You normally would never want to allow parking on a septic field, so this is a great way to add more space without compromising on function. And maintenance of a grass pavement is going to be similar to maintaining any grass surface. Your standard lawn mower will do the trick. So our last case study today is out of Vermont at the Billings Farm and Museum. They'd wanted to expand parking areas for visitors, but had run out of impervious surface area according to local stormwater regulations. So they turned to the geoblock system to allow for grassed parking areas. E.J. Prescott was called in to help determine how the geoblock system could be placed around the curving entrance road. It's fairly easy to stagger the panels to accommodate curves in that area. The soil will fill in around the panels and the road, and then cars will be able to drive over it without causing damaging, damage or rutting, which would usually be seen in a standard lawn that doesn't have the confinement of the geoblock system. Placing straw over the filled panels helps with the grass growth, and it lets people know that they can't park in those areas quite yet. As mentioned previously, it's easy to field cut the panels to accommodate common obstacles on site, such as manholes, parking medians, or other structures, so that the grass and the vehicle support go right up to the edge, so there are no areas that may fail due to lack of support. Once the grass is grown in, there's still access to the manhole for utility work, without having to worry about the surrounding area getting damaged. So the units were filled in with topsoil with a standard front end loader, and then the material was hand raked into the cells to make sure all of the panels were fully filled. The topsoil does not need to be compacted into the cells. You just want to fill them flush with the top of the cells. 
Then you can see there's the fully vegetated area on the right. The geoblock protected areas can support vehicle loads and accommodate stormwater runoff from the asphalt road. And the water can infiltrate through with no need for an above ground stormwater detention pond. And all local regulations have been f fulfilled with an attractive solution. So in summary, we've covered the geopave and geoblock rigid porous pavement systems and detailed the many advantages they have over traditional hard surface pavements. Benefits such as stormwater management, high vehicle load capacities, and aesthetic aggregate or vegetated infill are some of the great aspects of using a porous pavement system. We offer a complete system solution for both stone and grass surface porous pavements based on project specific details and conditions. Part of our complete solution is going to be our technical assistance. We provide free project design evaluations. The form is on our website prestogeo.com and you can fill it out with as much information as you have, including attaching documents such as geotechnical reports, and then it comes to us. And within three business days, but usually a lot faster, we can provide a complete design evaluation, including anchorage requirements if necessary and geotextile recommendations. And we're going to work with you to get the best design for your project. My contact info is here if questions come up later, and info for EJ Prescott for questions about pricing or local support. A follow-up email will be coming to you in a few days, so please keep an eye out for that. This recorded webinar is going to be placed on the EJ Prescott YouTube channel so that you can use it for a review of this topic and share it with others who may have missed our presentation today. Presto Geosystems also has a YouTube channel where you can learn about our other products and applications. And if you're eligible, you've earned a half PDH credit for listening to the presentation today. And the follow-up email is going to provide instructions on how you can receive your certificate. So now, some questions have come in during the course of the presentation. I'll answer those real quick.